Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I'm going to animate my ball sprite so that it moves around the screen, so it bounces around the screen. And uh, a lot of what we're going to do from now on is not going to be Android specific and if you just want to look at the Android specific stuff then you probably want to skip ahead till the stuff that we're going to do on sound um, because I think until then probably there's going to be some stuff on getting touch coordinates but uh, most of what we're going to do here is going to be kind of general kind of game programming type stuff until we get to the, the sound bit and at the moment what I've got is if I go to my game let's go to um, all apps here and start my game from the icon then it starts off with a ball and this is actually moving smoothly but the problem is that on the screencast it looks jerky which is annoying but if I run it in an emulator it's just as bad so um, if I'm, not, I'm not even sure if it r runs in an emulator I think last time I tried it didn't work so I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to bear with me and to trust me that it does actually move smoothly in real life and in real life the actual drawing looks quite a lot nicer as well because the screencast expands it to like one and a half times its actual size so at the moment the ball just plows ahead and jumps right off the screen and what I need is some code in update here to detect when it hits the edge and to make it change direction and I'm going to do that initially crudely but we'll at least get it basically working in this tutorial and I need to give this sprite class methods for getting the actual bounding rectangle of this image. So I'm going to give it a method called public rect get rect um, which uh, sounds like um, a command to get very very drunk if you're from Britain get rect but uh, it, it's actually get the rectangle that bounds the actual image is the meaning of it and I'm going to up here let's create a private rect um, let's call this bounds and yeah that should do the trick let's have the input for rect there and to calculate this rectangle what I'll do is in init where we load the image I can then say bounds equals new rect and if I just do control space um, we can see the how the constructor parameters work and we've got the left top right and bottom of the rectangle and this is going to be relative to the image so the left and top are going to be zero zero the y coordinate is actually actually goes from the top down so that the topmost bit is going to be zero so what was that left top right and bottom and the right is going to be image dot width get width and bottom image dot get height and now that's the bounds relative to the bitmap itself um, and I can return that in get rect so I can say return bounds but I also need I, I need to know the rectangle actually on the screen so I'm going to give it a public rect get screen rect as well and this is going to return the kind of the rectangle that the image covers actually on the screen and to to do that I'm going to say rect screen actually let's just call it rect equals new rect and the left is going to be bounds.get um, bounds dot well actually it's going to just be x isn't it it's going to be x and the uh, y It'd be nice if I could get the um, constructor here let's do control space left top right and bottom so the left is going to be x right is going to be x plus x plus bounds dot let's say get bounds get bounds oh I called it get rect 
Um, yeah, let's go get rect dot width. So, is that right? So the constructor is left, top, right, bottom. What am I doing? This is all wrong. Okay, the left is x. The top is y. Left, top, right is x plus get rect dot width and height and the I can't keep this in my head left top right bottom and the bottom is going to be y plus get rect dot height I think we're there so uh, this is the same rectangle um, it's the same size as this rectangle the only difference is we've got to add x and y onto x adds on to any coordinate, any horizontal coordinate, and y adds on to any vertical coordinate. And then we can return that. In fact, why not do this all in one step and just say return new rect? I think I should do the trick. Um, now there's an error here, and that's going to be because um, I have to use integers for the constructor here, which is a bit annoying. And I suppose I could say, because like width is returning, uh, well, x is certainly a flow. I could just put a bunch of typecasts in here. And um, by the time we're talking about the screen, then everything has to be boiled down to an integer anyway, because the screen's obviously, screen positions are specified in pixels. So um, it wouldn't do, it, there's no point in trying to specify the, the screen rect in terms of floating point values, because it's got to be boiled down to integers anyway. So I'll use a typecast. I could use math.round if I want to be really finicky, but uh, I think that for our purposes here, just casting to an integer, which would chop off any part that goes over the, the lower bounding integer value, would be fine. So, you know, if we say 8.9 and we cast it to an int, we're going to get 8. But I think I think that's fine for our purposes here. Now I can go ahead and use that to make the ball bounce because I can say here. So after we add the actual kind of speed and direction, I can then say um, rect screen rect equals get screen rect. So this is telling me the rectangle of this ball actually on the screen. And then I can say if screen rect dot get uh, dot x is probably what I want, I think. Screen rect dot left, that's the one, is less than or equal to naught. Then obviously that's no good. Um, so what I need to do is I need to say that the x direction is is then one. So that like the x direction is going to be minus one or plus one, and uh, it's going to be minus one if we're heading left and plus one if we're heading right. Because if it's plus one, then we're going to add the speed, which is always positive, times the elapsed time onto x, which will move it to the right. And in fact, let's let's do the addition down here, like that. So if the left corner of that rectangle is off the screen to the left, this says, then make sure change the direction to one. I mean, because presumably the direction must be minus one, um, and that was how the left got to be less than zero. Um, so we're going to make sure it's one, and then we're going to be adding to x to move it back towards the right. I'm going to say else if screen rect dot right is greater than or equal to the screen width screen and this is what we need the screen width here for um, and actually I haven't got I need to have get methods in my sprite for the screen width and screen height let's go ahead and define those because the sprite does have this information so I'll right click and go to source, generate, getters and setters, and I don't really need, I don't think I need setters, but let's tick get screen height, get screen width, and that should do the trick. 
And so here I'm going to say if screen dot write is greater than or equal to get screen width, then I need to turn the ball back the other way and say direction x equals negative one. And it's going to be exactly the same again for y basically. So if um, if screen rect dot top I remember that we, we number down from the top down on the y-axis so top is going to be the smaller coordinate so if screen dot top is less than zero it means it's off the top of the screen we want to say direction y is going to be one and uh, else if screen rect dot bottom is greater than or equal to and this, this one's going to be get screen height then direction y is going to be minus 1 we want to start subtracting from y and I need the equal sign in there now if I've got this right now we're going to see the ball bouncing crudely around the screen it's going to be crude because well firstly you're going to see it as being crude because my emulator my screencast won't keep up with my phone but also because this screen rect is the rectangle of the entire bitmap instead of just being the ball so um, it's not going to be perfect but uh, well, you know what I forgot to start my emulator so I'll be back in one tick okay did I say emulator I meant screencast but anyway here it is it's running and although it appears jerky to you unfortunately it is actually animating smoothly and the ball doesn't look as jagged as it does unfortunately on this emulator and uh, you can see that it's bouncing around the screen but you'll notice that it's not hitting the exact edge of the screen it, um, it appears to stop short of it and that is because the bitmap has a transparent background which is bigger than the actual image and to fix that the sensible and efficient way of doing it would be to make your bitmap fit your image precisely and uh, I haven't done that just because I want to combine this image with its shadow and if I made the actual bitmap smaller to fit the actual image that's on it, the actual non-transparent bit I'd have to then manually line up the shadow with it uh, which uh, would be a good thing to do but just for kicks and because I'm very lazy what I'm going to do is rather than fill about with pixels manually um, and try and align the two correctly what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write a little algorithm in the next tutorial which is going to find the non-transparent region of that bitmap so we'll do that next time so that the ball will bounce more precisely and I'll leave it there for this time and until next time happy coding